Okay, so after fighting with the paste for a little while longer, I decided that I wasn't going to fight with it any longer and I was going to go get some higher quality thermal paste. So I ran down to my local electronics store and bought some Antec Formula 7 thermal paste, which has got like, uh, what's it say, diamond particles measuring 0 0.0000015 centimeters in a heat transfer suspension solution decrease space between conductive compounds, blah, 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 blah. It's awesome. It's the pretty much either, either the best or one of like the top three thermal pastes available right now. So I'm going to use that and get it open after I like tear all the plastic. Rip it up. Oh, and look how handy. It comes with a little plastic spreader of its own. That is extremely convenient. So this is great. I'm going to keep this forever. Uh, okay, now, so here we've got a, let me take my watch off again. Here we've got a learning experience. Since I'm not going to be using this to spread the thermal paste now, I'm going to clean that later. I was going to clean it now, but I don't really have to, so I'm not going to. But I need to clean the little bit of thermal paste off of, throw that away, thermal paste off of the processor that's currently there. This thermal paste had a clay-like consistency. It was very, very thick, very hard to spread, not something you really want to fight with. So now i got to take the junk off. So the easiest way to do this is with a microfiber cloth. Or if you don't have a microfiber cloth, you can use uh, a paper towel. Just be extremely careful with the paper towel. Uh, and you also want to get isopropyl alcohol. Do not get regular rubbing alcohol. Uh, if you can find, let me rephrase that. If you can find isopropyl alcohol at a hole-in-the-wall electronic store, uh, big box stores like Best Buy and, and Walmart probably won't carry this. Um, very readily. However, small hole-in-the-wall mom-and-pop electronic stores will. The ones that sell individual components, because uh, this is used to clean electronics. Uh, if you can't find isopropyl alcohol, use the highest concentration of rubbing alcohol you can find. Uh, I've seen like 97% rubbing alcohol, and, and that's probably next best to this. Uh, but do not, under any circumstances, use anything like Windex, 409 or, or any other cleaning product that's designed for household use. You need stuff designed specifically for electronics. So I'm going to use this to remove the thermal paste from my processor. You just kind of ball this up and apply the alcohol to your cloth, whether it's microfiber or, or paper towel. So we'll just do that number, get some alcohol on there, cap that off, come on, alright, now, and then just gently rub it across the, the processor, and you, as you can see there, um, I hope that comes out on camera, there's tons of that gunk just came right on off, no issue whatsoever, so let's see, getting the remainder of this junk off of there. Try to limit the... Oop, sorry, it's getting all over the place. Just rub it into my fingers real quick. It's safer than having it fall into other portions of the motherboard. Um, try to limit the alcohol's exposure to other components, although it will not innately damage them. Uh, it's just better that way. All right. There we go. And then that alcohol, because it's isopropyl alcohol, it evaporates almost instantaneously. So now, as far as that processor is concerned, it is completely spotless. So put that out of camera range, probably. And I don't need the rubbing alcohol or actual isopropyl alcohol anymore. Get rid of that. And let me move this junk at least. If it's not out of the camera, at least it's out of my way. Get off of my finger. Okay. That too. I don't need you. Okay. 
you are not very good. So now we will use the Antec thermal paste, which in theory should be much better. Does it screw off? No, it doesn't seem to. Mm. There we go. Okay, so again, since we're not using the blade in that, we will use this little plastic spreader, dealy bopper. This is the first time I've actually seen one specifically included, so that is awesome. Alright, so again, apply a small amount to the center. This is probably going to be white instead of gray, but I don't know. Come on. Nope, still gray. That is a much better consistency. Okay, pull the plunger back a little. Pop that sucker back on there. And this is what I was talking about earlier, a large container of thermal compound. This will probably last you 25 to 30 processors if you use it correctly. Uh, as far as, as the, the quantity you actually use, this is 4 grams of thermal paste. And I think they say you're supposed to put like 0.3 grams per processor. Oh yeah, that's much easier to spread. However, I am going to need a little more paste because although this is spreading easier, it's still not going as far as I thought it would. There used to be, I used to get some thermal paste that was more liquidy. I guess, I guess this, this thicker paste is more common now. Uh, it was more liquidy, so that one little dot I could easily spread it across the entire processor. So, I'll just add a couple of small dots around the processor. So I don't need much more there. And then I'll remove some if I go over a little. There we go. Okay. So, go like this. Wow. What happened to like this stuff spreading so much more? That's weird. I don't foresee this being a real issue. Oops. Grab that with my finger. There we go. I guess it just needed to warm up a little bit. Now it's starting to spread a little better. Thankfully, it's warm enough where I live that this is just heating up from room temperature. I keep hitting the edge of the processor like that. That is... Yeah. Let me cut some of this out. In the center. Some there. And that should give me good enough coverage once I get that spread out. Keep in mind also when you're spreading this stuff over the processor that although it may look like there are areas of this processor that are not getting complete coverage, when this processor heats up, this thermal paste is going to get much more liquidy and then the pressure applied to it by the actual physical heat sink itself will spread it out some more. So don't be too upset that you're not getting perfect coverage. It won't really be that big of a deal later on. Right. That's not too bad right there. Still used to that watery stuff, so I'm like all anticipating better spread. Okay. Just a tiny bit more in that corner, and it'll be okay. Alright. Yeah, this stuff wasn't rolling. As, as, as much as the other stuff was that came with the, uh, the heat sink. So, 
I'm much more confident in this thermal paste. Okay. That should give us sufficient coverage for the uh, the actual pressure of the heat sink itself and um, the heat of the processor to give us good coating. I'll just rub the excess into my hands real quick just to get rid of it. Alright, so there you go. We've got some thermal paste on the processor. That's not looking too terribly bad on the edges. Make sure you're not getting any real contact of the thermal paste on any of the electronics outside of that. That's part of the reason why in a second I'm going to go wash my hands. But I'm going to get this heat sink mounted on here first. So, now that the thermal paste is applied, they, re they recommend removing the plastic film off of the heat sink. So let's do that. And you'll notice, well, you probably won't notice through the camera, but the finish underneath this plastic is nearly mirrored, uh, a, a, a nearly a mirror finish. I don't know if you can see that in the camera or not, but I'll see what I can do in editing to make that visible for you. It's, it's almost perfectly flat. It's been buffed as clean as possible. Buff! And that's basically what you want right there. Okay, so next they recommend attaching these guys. Uh, get that out of the way. Secure the securing plates, which is 03, onto the cooler using the 05 screws, those, and these are Phillips head, so I'll be fine with that. Now, as though it was sitting like this, nope, sorry, drop it on the motherboard again, perfect, just what I want. Okay. So, with it sitting like that, actually, we apply these to the sides where the pipes are located. Hither. And the screws come in from the top. Yep, okay. Now I will use this screwdriver. Because these are smaller screws. Like that guy right there. And there are little ridges on these screw holes. You probably can't tell. But those ridges do the same thing as these nuts did on the motherboard. They kind of pop through the metal just a little bit to make it obvious that that is correct alignment. Screw that in real quick. You can do it. There you go. Now, we will place this one in the exact same way. Snip. And dupe. I can hold my hand still. Try to limit touching. They probably should have told you to screw these on before you took the film off. But try not to touch the mirror finish area of this because you want it to remain as perfect mirrored as possible. Alright. So now those are perfectly screwed in. Alright. Now they tell us to flip the sucker over and Okay, these four screws will actually go through these screw holes here and there. So, as you slide this guy down, lining up two should, in theory, line up the other two, which it did. Excellent. All right, now, once those are in place, you take these four spring-loaded screws and these are what you will actually screw down onto those threaded rods. Uh, and that is basically it. 
these spring-loaded screws are, are technically thumb screws. And they're not really screws, they're just like advanced nuts because they're acceptors for these existing threaded rods that stick up. And I bet you all are going to love the phrase threaded rod and screw and nuts. It's just awesome. Um, screw them in kind of basically. Don't go all tight on them yet because you are going to have to get the other four on. And then what you want to do is you want to roughly screw them all down for the most part the exact same distance as close as you can. Let's see. It tells you to screw them in diagonally from each other. Of course I didn't do that. Don't screw completely at once. Make gradually until all four screws are fixed. Um, what is it saying here? Orient the thing for fan flow. Inside the case, cooler fan is normally providing airflow in the direction. Um, from front to rear side. Okay, what side is the front? Doesn't exactly tell you. Oops. So, now we'll screw in opposite cornered screws each a few times each. Keep in mind that although you want really good contact between the mirrored finish of the heat sink and the processor, you do not want to crush the processor. That's part of what these springs are here for, is if the processor starts getting too crushed, the springs will start taking most of the load. And now, because it is perfectly mounted on there, I can lift the entire motherboard off using just the heat sink and not the board itself. Convenient thing with that is that tells you that you've got good pressure on your motherboard. So no worries there. And by looking at it, it seems to have really good coverage. Um, I'm looking at the uh, the space between the heat pipes and the processor itself you probably can't make that out on camera but if you look in there the heat pipes are making direct contact with the processor and I wanted to make sure it was firm enough that some of the thermal paste was beginning to squeeze out which is what you want because it's thinning out the thermal paste for you automatically so here is a completed motherboard processor cooler combo set. It's basically all there is to it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and throw the RAM onto this guy and see how well that goes.